Liz Truss, cheese aficionado and pork markets fan. Will she ever be remembered for anything else? Has today announced 10 brand new trade envoys to represent Britain and promote our exports and our interests. Truss might be the most popular Tory politician, God only knows why, but she's never been known for being the brightest. Perhaps that's unfair. Perhaps she's picked some real experts here, some real professionals in this field. After all, her boss Johnson signed off on them all. So who is she appointed then? Who are these trade experts? Oh dear, Liz, you were better off with the cheese. Liz Truss, the Secretary of State for International Trade and never want to shy away from bigging up even the smallest deal, has today announced 10 brand new trade envoys to help open up new trade links, promote our produce and big up Great Britain post-Brexit. All sounds rather positive, doesn't it? So who are these booming economies we're sweet talking? Who are these new faces? Well, let's start with Australia. And you can imagine Liz Truss thinking, what are we famous for in Australia? What do they love about us? and came up with cricket. They don't love us for cricket out there, Liz. They love us for losing against them at cricket. So rather than appoint anyone with familiarity with Australian economics and where we have common ground with our produce, she appointed a cricketer who also happens to have joined the Vermin and Ermine in the House of Lords in 2020, becoming Baron Ian Beefy Botham of Ravensworth. Although he sits as a crossbencher, Botham was vocally pro-Brexit, which is all the qualification he surely needs. What part of cricketer training, what conversations in the clubhouse concerning economics and trade relations had he had, I wonder? Weren't the Tories implying sportsmen should stick to what they know? They told Marcus Rashford he had no business sticking his nose into things that didn't concern him when he strove to feed kids during the holiday when the Tories would rather they starved and shamed them into doing something about it. What could qualify this millionaire footballer after all other than growing up poor himself? He had a life experience. Botham has none regarding trade. The Tories really do need to make up their minds. Can sportsmen make good politicians? Yes or no? Ghana next. And who have the Tories carefully selected for this one? Former Labour MP, and by the fact she's taken the Ian Austin weasel route into the Tories' grace and favour, you can tell that's where she really belongs. Kate Howey. Yes, screamingly pro-Brexit cheerleader, another life peer to the House of Lords, an Irish white woman, Kate Howey. Was there any reason, real desire to have somebody with something remotely in common with Ghana appointed to this post? I mean, she was certainly one of the loudest voices for Brexit. She even got on a boat with Nigel Farage, so perhaps she's owed a favour. I'm not sure what the Ghanaians did to deserve her, though. She can bring her political experience of cutting her nose off to spite her face, wanting to hunt small wildlife and demand all cyclists be registered, I suppose, but I really don't know what else she has to offer. Have they even heard of her over there? Sir Geoffrey Donaldson MP is off to Cameroon. He's a DUP MP, Brexit patsies that they were for the Tories, and it seems they just can't help but still cosy up to them, and even after the way they were shafted. And what is it the Tories have about sending the Irish to Africa? Or do you have to be Irish and bigoted to count? Have they left Dominic Raab to sort this out? He does know Ireland isn't over there, right? Donaldson apparently is already trade envoy to Egypt, so apparently he's got enough time for this as well as be trade envoy for Egypt, which is remarkably reassuring that we're clearly getting some massive trade deals going on there if he's got time to do both. Current Tory MP Connor Burns is off to Canada, an Irishman not heading for Africa. Well, there's a change, though no doubt his constituents in Bournemouth will be delighted to see their MP working for them on the other side of the Atlantic. The joys of living in a Tory safe seat. You don't matter. Another Brexiteer, so a shoe in for a trade envoy job, I guess. But this is a guy who was forced to resign as a Minister of State for trade policy only last year for being found guilty by the Parliamentary Standards Commission for threatening to expose a member of the public using parliamentary privilege. He got suspended from Parliament for seven days for behaving like a thug. So this very much looks like your typical Tory rewards for bad behaviour when they think we've stopped looking. We see you. Sorry, Canada, you've drawn a short straw. Another Tory MP, Mark Eastwood, is off to Pakistan, and you've guessed it. He's a Brexiteer, he's white, and I'm not sure how fluent his Urdu might be. He has been to Pakistan once, apparently, though, as part of an all-party delegation, so he does at least know where it is. He was a new intake MP for 2019, a Red Wall Tory, so there's little else to be said about him at this point, but there really doesn't seem to be much needed to qualify anyone for these roles. 
David Mundell. For some time, the lone Tory MP in Scotland has been appointed trade envoy to New Zealand. So at least they've got a politician and not a sportsman. But the question needs to be asked, given that he's being sent from Plague Island, will they even let him in? Do watch my recent vid on New Zealand going back into lockdown again off the back of a single new COVID case. There's an irony, sending a Scottish unionist to an island that gained its independence from Britain and has been successful. He doesn't seem to think that's possible, you see. Another Tory MP, Marco Longhi, who, he who replaced cowardly Ian Austin, who had stood down as an MP rather than face defeat. Of course, the Tories then gave that snivelling rodent an ermine overcoat, showing he was never really Labour to begin with. Longhi is off to Brazil. He's lived there. He speaks Portuguese. You could almost think there was logic to this choice if we hadn't already run through a bunch of absolute howlers. But Longhi is a Tory after all. He owns numerous properties, a landlord, and had accused the National Trust of being both woke and of appropriating cultural Marxism, which is a known racist trope. So no doubt he'll get on brilliantly with the heir of Bolsonaro. Stephen Timms is off to Switzerland and Liechtenstein, famous between them for chocolate and false teeth. So the more of one they can push upon us, the more we'll need the other. I thought the idea was for us to export goods, not import more of them. Now, he's a Remainer and Labour MP, so how did he sneak through? But perhaps the question ought to be, why on earth is a currently serving opposition MP taking a role from the governing party? Because that's just taking the piss and makes Labour look even more of a failure in the opposition department than it already is. Why are you doing this? Felicity Buchan has been appointed as a trade envoy to Norway and Iceland. She who is the new or is a serving current MP for Kensington, having replaced the excellent Emma Dent code and therefore inheriting the ongoing unresolved mess of Grenfell. I'm sure her constituents will be delighted that she's sodding off to Scandinavia, though given she voted against the Labour amendment to the fire safety bill intended to implement the recommendations of the first phase of the Grenfell Tower inquiry, they're probably more than well aware she doesn't give a shit. A former banker, her only qualification to this role appears to be the fact she's Scottish and therefore comes from the bit of Britain closest to Norway and Iceland. And lastly, there's Lord Volney. There's an innocuous name, but it's bloody John Woodcock, a former Labour MP who took a Tory peerage. Funny so many of these have been former Labour MPs that we've read out today. It's almost as if the Labour Party is led by people who don't really belong in it, doesn't it? He left the Labour Party, let's not forget, coincidentally, whilst a sexual harassment investigation into him was taking place. He was Ian Austin's sidekick and fellow Corbyn basher and stood up publicly declaring what a danger Corbyn was to society and advocating for people to vote Tory. Yeah, that worked out well, didn't it? He and Austin got their peerages for services went rendered, but don't think he's satisfied yet. He's a co-owner of the Jewish Chronicle. Well, he's been appointed trade envoy to Tanzania. Whilst this country suffers, the people he purported to represent, he has utterly betrayed for his own ends, and he's still cashing in. I can only apologise in advance to the people of Tanzania. I had no idea the Tories hated you this much. So we have a list of 10 trade envoys, many with no experience in trade whatsoever, all on the gravy train to some extent or another, despite 50% of these nations being majority non-white, 100% of all the trade envoys are white. 80% of them are male, and 70% of them are pro-Brexit. Liz Truss and Boris Johnson aren't interested in getting trade deals. I doubt they're bothered whether any of these people succeed or fail. These are pats on the back. These are golden handshakes. These are rewards for loyalty and services rendered. And when we're paying for all of this, or whilst the Tories cut to ribbons our quality of life, or whilst our cost of living goes up and our services suffer, we should all be very, very pissed off at this.